live. Chris, Hello. thanks for coming. Hello, Dave. Uh, and uh, we have a new episode of the Agflix podcast. And I have uh, one of my friends. Um, I, I, I think I can call you friend today. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we met um, via LinkedIn. And then uh, from there, we, we, we decided to to talk and and about design yeah. design system so, yeah. so let me introduce you quickly to sure. the people listening and watching us right now sure um uh Huss is a, is will be described as a ux ui designer that's good yeah that is um uh, the way the way um he will portray himself and is obsessed <laughs> with design system yep. and um He lives in Amsterdam. Uh, you have been doing. Um, uh, you, you've been a, a, a game designer and developer for about seven plus years. There is a like you have a funny story about uh, moving from one industry to that industry. So yeah. that would be really something interesting for the people listening. Sure. And um, um, you also give workshops, coaching people through uh, your company called Atom Design. Design. Yes. Did I say he's obsessed with design system? Yeah, <laughs> you are obsessed with design system. So, uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about freedom for one. Yes, yes, correct. That will probably be uh, a topic. Even when he, he told me that, I was like, what? Yeah, it's basically but, the, red li the red line uh, that uh, walks through all these uh, things yeah. that I do. Yeah. Great. So, um, welcome again. For, Thank you. And, uh, Let me let me know what I didn't get right in your introduction. You, you, you got you got everything right, but maybe I can add some uh, yeah. some things. Right. Um, so um, I'm the I, UX UI designer. At least that's uh, the title that I use to uh, uh, make people understand what I do. Because yeah. uh, UX is more about strategy than actually about development. So when you talk about yourself as a UX UI designer, they only see oh that guy can do development. He can code. He does his own design system. Let's put him in the in. The Uh, in, in the development crew, which is what I love, but um, uh, design systems are a little bit more um, uh, cross-discipline. So okay. having only uh, development and designers um, uh, work with uh, with me yeah. is, uh, I think, a loss of uh, value because you can add a lot more value when you include uh, everybody, even if they're not coders. Yeah. Uh, and your design system should be able to be uh, operated by no coders. That's my opinion. Nice. So, I agree um, with you. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so yes, I've been a game designer before, uh, and game designer and developer before um, I switched to um, basically startups and and, uh, and tech in general. Because uh, the the reason why I switched was actually quite simple. Um, games don't solve any problems, and second, they take a really long time to make. So. Um, startups and and really simple concepts are uh, yeah you can literally uh, build them in a, in an evening if you if you really wanted to there's yeah. so many frameworks there there are not that many frameworks for games to make uh, a kind of game so yeah. Um, yeah I started a uh, game design and development back in 2008 when uh, before that I was uh, still a restaurant manager, yeah. uh, which a lot of people uh, find weird, but I was, um, uh, was basically uh, uh, yeah, serving tables before uh, I was serving design systems. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a very, very good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that w I, I always did that job after uh, in my uh, high school. So for me, it was very normal because after um, high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So for a couple of years, I worked in a restaurant where I was already working. I promoted to a general manager, but I was completely unhappy. So a friend of mine said, uh, uh, when, when are you going to do something with those games of yours? Because I was really into games. I was writing for Film Focus, which was a magazine back then for video games. Yeah. I was one of the editors there. You, so, you were also one of the tester, yeah. like for Sony at yeah. some point. Okay, correct. Go, go ahead, yeah, yeah, correct. I was an official uh, uh, tester back in the day of PlayStation 2 when they just had this uh, yeah. modem to to. <laughs> to to install on your PlayStation 2 to test some games and I was uh, testing with the people from the UK um, so I was much into games that was really uh, something I really love to do um, and then um, in 2008 I was accepted at the High School of Arts and Technology uh, that was my second attempt because the first attempt didn't uh, didn't work okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't accepted so I had to wait another year but in 2008 my year was there and they accepted me 
out of all the people. And um, that's why my journey into tech actually started. So nice. I started in video games, which is very broad. And actually video games will also ha still have, uh, have their roots in my work because um, uh, for design systems, I uh, promote or I advocate for gamified governance. So there's no people who govern the design system. It's actually a system of rules and a okay. system of points where if you contribute to the system, you get you rank higher, just like in a video game. Yeah, yeah. And then wow. the people who commit more and who are more uh, devoted to that system, they actually get more uh, authority because they rank higher. Yeah. So uh, to give you an example, if um, you're the CEO of the company, but I'm an intern and I've been working at your company for two weeks, and I've been working at the design system because I really love that stuff. Yeah. And I'm now level two. And now you, you're you busy, right? And you wanted to commit uh, your new color for uh, whatever project. Then there's a very good chance by that system that the intern will review the CEO's work. Work, yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're ranked higher in the design system. Yeah. So that's a completely closed off um, concept for um, any kind of governance that's already there in the company. Because I think if you have a, a matrix organization or um, you know very uh, layered uh, hierarchy and, and, and management, yeah. that's often needed in companies. But what I don't see is any change of how you manage your design system, because most of your design system will be run and, and made by the people who use it. Yeah. I don't see any reason for people on a higher layer of management to start governing that because surely the responsibilities um, are and the, and the risks are high. But in that vein, I would actually say that's exactly the reason why I would have those people govern it. Yeah, indeed. I right? understand so, that. Uh, because otherwise you get the split personality. You basically have somebody who doesn't know a lot about it, who needs to take all the accountability. Yeah. So they will, they will start to uh, manage that from unknowing. So they don't know what to, so therefore they will be strict. Yeah. Where if you loosen up, it will be, yeah. And uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating because I, I, I'm also uh, intrigued by design system. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I met you, I was like, that guy has even more passion for that thing than me with computer science <laughs> and programming. So, um, but our audience, it's like we have a lot of developers, we have a lot of, uh, tech recruiters, people working in tech. Mm -hmm. How would you de uh, uh, define design system to those right. people? Yeah. Okay. Um, the term that I use for design system is actually gradual design system. And why do I say gradual? Because everybody talks about design system as Lego block, Le Lego blocks. The Lego, yeah. Yeah. Um, I say you need to design the mold of your Lego block first, and then you need to start printing those Lego blocks. Yeah. Right, so you build that, uh, those Lego blocks gradually, because the, um, the thing I see now is that people get a whole bucket full of Lego blockjes, but it's actually uh, quite overwhelming because it's so much, there's so much of that, oh, yeah. there's so much of that system. Um, so how I sell, um, um, not how I sell design systems, I actually show design system because talking about design system is 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 one thing. Yeah. And actually, when you show people and, and and see how they can work with it, then actually the design system starts to connect because then you see that it's a cross discipline of product design and yeah. development, where everybody the design system itself is a product. So if you were if you so, um, there there is something we do at, at Hackflex. Uh, it's this idea of uh, teach me anything in less than ten minutes. Okay. Would you be would you be able to draw, yes. like a, 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 a like on this tablet? Yes. What a design system will be in less than ten minutes and explain that to. Uh, yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we we will we will, for the people listening or watching, yeah. we're gonna do a a, a quick uh, a teach me anything sure. in less than ten minutes about design system from you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but today. There is one topic that you wanted to 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 really dive into. Mm -hmm. It's the freedom, freedom for one. For one, yes. And can you can you explain first? Yeah, uh, to people listening, what what it is. Uh, yeah. Now I understand a little bit better, and then let's dive into it. Sure, sure. Um, so um, uh, it, it's basically I'm I'm going to target it on design systems, so you understand the context a little bit better. 
Um, so I'm um, a freelance and uh, yeah, a front end designer uh, because I, I do both you uh, design and front end. But um, I want my customers to have a really good quality yeah. um, a value for the work that I do for them. I think one of the values that you can add right now is you give them a design system to start with. That's not what they ask for, but yeah. that's probably what they need and what they want if they want to keep on using your designs for future development. Mm -hmm. So freedom for one, what I mean by that is if you can create a, a system or a way of working that literally enables every single one person to work um, uh, using not just your standards, but their standards, the collective standards of what people want, then you create freedom for one. Because if you have freedom for one, you have freedom for all. Okay. So rather than uh, designing it for a whole big team of people with a head and management and that kind of stuff, you they, they, you restrict uh, the people who are using the system from designing the system. So if you make sure that you include those people when you design your system, you create freedom for one because everybody feels included yeah. in the decision making and the way of working of that system. Okay, but uh, can you can you take um, it, it is? The, are we talking about um, uh, as you mentioned before, incremental design mm -hmm, system? Right, saying yeah. like you have one person that comes with a minimal design system, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I'm not gonna say force force that upon the other people like they should be using it, but trying to from there gradually add. Yeah. Um, what the other people in the team uh, s like or um, s uh, they're, they're, I don't know how to phrase that. It's just I can maybe try uh, it for yeah, you. Yeah, so yeah, just just yeah, yeah go can, ahead, go I ahead. How do you see it in the in, like apply in the industry today? Yeah, so um, I say start with the minimum uh, that you need to get uh, things consistent. So that's basically your colors, your types, your spacing. Um, okay. Also the the platforms that you use because the uh, the grid spacing and the layouts that you use uh, differ uh, yeah. per, per per device. But that's not um, the most important thing about uh, um, building it together. The, the the thing is ad adaptation. So how do pe how do people adopt something that you made because I design with positive intent, yeah. but I, I validate with negative intent. So I, oh, look for okay. what, I look for what they don't do with I it. I like that, yeah. They, I look for what they don't do with it. So when you see that, you, you should not judge that. You should find out why, because it's basically a habit they have, and they want to keep on, that's normal for people to do. Mm -hmm. They do what they are, 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 are used to. Uh, they do. They do what they used. To, no, how do you say that? Yeah, they they have to used to. Yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of habit. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a matter of habit, indeed. Yeah. And when these, um, when they need to change that habit, that actually takes a lot of effort. Yeah, because you have to be remembered to not do something you used to do and yeah. do something new, new that you're not familiar with yeah. yet. So look for the adaptation first. Look, so design with the positive intent on how to use this, show the, 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 the positive outcomes, but also validate with negative intent. So if people have very good reasons to say, ah, we shouldn't do it this way because yeah, it will uh, create a lot of, um, uh, well, maybe a lot of development depth. So then maybe you have to do a lot of refactoring through, yeah. throughout your whole code base because you're, you're trying to change a, a certain naming or whatever. Um, there's good reasons where uh, uh, there's good reasons for any department, especially development, to say no to things. So I'm not looking for uh, what's the best way to teach people. I'm looking for what's not there and what uh, what they don't do. Okay, but um, do you have um, like a scenario that you will that that can portray that, uh, uh, basically like uh, applying freedom for one mm -hmm. at company or? Actually, I do. Um, this has more to do with um, UX research, but um, at Atlassian, uh, my girlfriend works there and she is on the product advocate team. And I'm actually teaching her how to do uh, UX research, also using their design system mm -hmm. to, to show that uh, the solutions that she can make are actually can be built. Um, but I'm teaching her uh, in my own spare time and also she does it outside of working yeah. hours. And uh, teaching one person uh, to do something differently that they do, wouldn't be able to do before because companies don't uh, normally say to product advocates, hey, you can uh, do UX research. Yeah. Uh, 
but uh, showing uh, showing somebody uh, from the ground up how you would do it and then they work the same or they work in the same context as you they, they have the same mindset as you to to solve it mm-hmm. i think that creates the bigger group because that's a decentralized um, um, uh, a decentralized way of working yet it's centralized if everybody sticks to it okay you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. each individual, actually, the atom of each uh, um, uh, system builds up the whole uh, the, the whole, whole system. system. Yeah. yeah, correct. Um, another example is for Next Amsterdam. I created their uh, um, the start of their design system, but you have to take into account that um, they have two interns. Uh, one is a is a programmer. The other one cannot program. The see that both the founders, one is also a programmer, but the other one is completely an artist. Mm-hmm. Have no uh, no idea on yeah. how to uh, uh, build a design system. Yeah. Yet I created these very simple basics and simple rules for them to stick to regarding making presentations. Because one of the things that they're doing right now yeah. is the most important thing, and it is of course doing their sales. So when you create your colors and your type and your spacings yeah a lot of people uh, limit that to their app and their uh, yeah that the, the technical side indeed but you need to create a full story so you use that not just for your app and your website but you also create it for all the handouts that you give yeah you also use it for um, all the presentations that you give you even your business card uses it so because yeah. usually people when they say oh let's let's build a um a design system for com- for a company, mm-hmm. they stick. They only uh, constrain that to, to digital, digital, yeah. and that's uh, very weird because I actually use um, I use the same foundations, but I have one for digital, one for print. Yeah, because they're completely uh, they use a different kind of uh, color uh, system. Hey, you have a CMYK. Uh, you can use RGBA, but some other use maybe um, uh, HSL or yeah. whatever you need to use. Um, uh, that's not the most important uh, thing. The most important thing is making people aware that it's not just digital. It, it goes through, yeah, it, it, it's, it's basically your brand identity mm-hmm. that you want to um, uh, cast into one simple form and then yeah. start building it from there. Because once I gave them those basics, they started creating all these creations with it because they didn't feel restricted by uh, a whole system. Mm-hmm. They just had a rule set and really good basics. And now they're creating their own presentations and they actually are discussing it internally using those rules and then deciding for themselves, hey, that's a good design decision. Let's do it like this. Okay. And uh, what is the iteration process if you if they want to add something mm-hmm. or remove something from the... The system. system. So, um, w- if you have, um, if you created like a new color, so I needed, uh, for example, I needed a new darker blue for mm-hmm. a piece of text. I look for uh, the ramp that's already there, and I look for, okay, where does this fall into? Like, this, it falls in between the middle color and the, the darkest color. Mm-hmm. So I create a new color, but I actually call it a snowflake. Snowflake, okay. Because um, uh, it's not, a, or an, some people say edge case, but I say it's just a choice that is not so obvious, it's rare. So, um, the simplest thing you can just do is just apply it and then communicate to your other team members, like, hey, I added this color for this reason. Mm-hmm. And then, first of all, right now, it's considered a snowflake. But as soon as the whole team agrees, yeah, this color should be in the in the palette, then we're going to give it a, a formal name using the rules to name things. Okay. And then it gets added to the system. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's actually really, really simple. And in larger companies, it's, it's a lot more difficult because but, there's a lot more. Yeah. That that is that is also my um, one of my questions. Uh, it's like, uh, how do companies, uh, in term, uh, what are the size of the companies adopting a design system? Or I can put it differently, saying, uh, do every com- every company should do should build a design system? I think every person should be able to build a should design every system. Every person, okay. Yeah. So for me, it's more about really starting really small. Yeah. That's the most important and thing. The incremental part of it, and yeah, then you absolutely. build up on top of it. Yeah, because basically, um, if you look at it uh, very um, very strictly, if you think about a design system, twenty percent is about the tech and uh, the the code base and all the stuff that you need to build the design system and 80 percent 
is all about adopting, uh, having people adopt the system, okay. keeping it maintained, keeping people yeah. uh, active, also proactive. That's a lot more work. Yeah. So that's something you can never you uh, fix for a company. Yeah. Like your company culture uh, is your company culture. A design system will not fix your product mission, your product vision, or your company, yeah. Uh, yeah, or your people. So okay. So let let's say uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a designer. Um, at the company X, and um, I I do believe I do believe in design system. Uh, how do I introduce that to to my team or yeah. to 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 my managers? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the 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 thing I would recommend you not do is trying to carry it alone. If you're working in a bigger company yeah. and you're the only one who um, who's going to champion uh, design systems there because you believe in that, uh, don't do that. I'll, g I'll give you the uh, exact uh, reason why. Um, I worked at a large corporate yeah. uh, not too long ago, and um, I created um, what I would call the wireframe version of their visual design library. Mm -hmm. Why was that? As uh, I was uh, hired there as an interaction designer to build the UI, and um, one of the requirements for uh, interaction designers is that it would work in wireframes. And I figured out that we had a visual design component library. Mm -hmm. I said, we can basically copy that, um, use uh, wireframe styling mm -hmm. to make the components look like wireframes. Then we can do our work or create the solution, present it, and if it's approved, we just swap it with the visual design library because all the components follow the same, uh, they, they're specced. Yeah. So why would you throw that away, right? That sounds like a very good idea, right? Indeed. <clears throat> so I did that. So I started building that thing alone, which was um, one of the weirdest experiences ever because basically my lead was telling me what to do but he wasn't doing anything because he was basically doing other stuff. Yeah. And I felt, um, how to say, um, it felt dumped. So it, I, and, and later, only later I realized I, I, I approached it the wrong way. I, I did it wrong. I don't think he did it wrong yeah. because he was just uh, tasked with being my lead. Yeah. He indeed. was just giving me feedback and he just said, no, no, this needs to be there and there and there. You always need a second pair of eyes. That's not the thing, but you need a you need a team player on this. So if you're in a big company and you want to start a design system, or if your manager or your or your uh, lead is telling you to build a design system, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it because if you're the only one tasked, you're the only one who's responsible. Yeah. And teaching people how to work with the design system that's really hard, because they have to adopt their habits. They have to work differently. Um, so make it playful. Okay. Play with these things. Uh, that's how also how I uh, uh, taught my girlfriend. I made um, a visual uh, regression test to really quickly test your primary colors and to see if that's a good color palette. Yeah. And it was a really funny, uh, a really um, funny looking um, sketch file because you can literally create a kind of uh, cartoony graphic with it using your color. So everybody's um, your your end result looks really good. So make it sure that they can't fail or they can't uh, feel shit. Yeah. Because they think, oh, I'm not good enough. No, it's the other way around. You're not good enough because they don't adapt it. Indeed. That's how I see it. Oh wow. Okay. So um, if if um, today you have um, uh, you want to build a design system, mm -hmm. um, which kind of tools you use and which kind of tools people should be using out there? Well, the best tool you can use is your common sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, one thing because uh, you have to be a little bit aware of the uh, the fad of design systems, which is basically there's a lot of JavaScript fanboys and they're completely huge fans of React and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And React is a great framework. Uh, that's not my point, but it should it should solve your problems and. Tools will not solve your problems. They will make you do solve those problems faster. So fix, fix. Um, really make sure that you find the root causes of the problems. Why you should have a design system yeah. first? Because, yeah, the tools are constantly changing. Indeed. Um, but uh, I do have. Uh, 
uh, one recommendation that I just like to recommend, not because it's a well-known tool, Sketch, because yeah, everybody knows Sketch, but the reason why I pick Sketch is because it's so easy for newcomers, yeah. even no coders, and that's why I'm saying no coders are so important to yeah. design systems, to pick that up. Have you tried Figma, for yeah, example? Yeah, well? yeah, yeah, Figma is great. I use Figma a lot for um, uh, more to work more uh, for a developer handoff, because I don't think Sketch is uh, capable of doing that uh, without uh, proper plugins, but for Figma e versioning, everything is built in. But that's more for production. For design systems, there's really not a lot of great tooling out there, other than, I would say, Webflow. Yeah, Webflow. Okay. Webflow and Framer. Okay. Those are the only two that actually work like development, because the other ones mimic development. Yeah. They don't work like how a developer would do it. Yeah, Framer is um, <coughs> uh, Amsterdam-based. Yeah, uh, cool and, book. Yeah. And it's a, it's a pretty awesome company. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to, to the people at Framer. So um, you, you uh, how about design system at agencies? Mm. That's, that's, a, that's a tricky one, I know. But uh, um, I, 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 when we were preparing for this uh, um, uh, podcast, you mentioned something about agency not using design system the right way. Can you uh, yeah, so tell that, us more that, about this? Yes, of course. Um, I've seen a few agencies that uh, say they help other companies build their design system. And I asked these agencies, do you actually have an internal design system? Do you actually have your <coughs> customers use your design system? And nine out of 10 times it's no. Where I say, um, and if they don't have an internal design system and, and you're a design agency, yeah, you basically suck at UX. And that's the only conclusion I can, can reach. And the reason is this, if you look at the circumstances to build your product, uh, just as normal, any or normal product that you would build as a UX or UI designer, then um, if you do a, a customer-centered design, some people say user-centered design, but I like to, to ditch the word user because it, it makes people sound like, like junkies and addicts. And um, So if you do customer-centered design, basically you have uh, your, not your customers included in the design decisions, but in the, in the whole, proce uh, whole process of design, the customer is always centered and also ask for feedback and, and, and you, name, you name what. Yeah. If you look at the design agency and they are building a product for their own team, it's a design system, yeah. you have the perfect customer-centered design circumstances. Those people are always around you. You can constantly see and check how your, your customer is using your product and you can't fix that. Then I say, if you're a design agency and you can't fix a design system for your own people and you have those perfect certain circumstances, yeah, there's only one conclusion. You suck at UX because UX is more about strategy than actually about development. development and if yeah. people don't cannot fix their strategy, then I say it's a, you're just doing UI design and you're just creating a system for UI design, but you're not creating a design system. Okay. That's a, uh, I mean, I, I, I will agree with that. Um, uh, is that, is, is that right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I will definitely uh, agree with, um, uh, with that. It's, uh, uh, is, is it, is it something you think people will agree like agencies today? They won't, oh, even, they, they don't, oh. they don't, they, trust me, they won't even like to talk about it. Oh, okay. I'm for sure. They're like, they're, uh, I would say uh, my, 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 the best teacher I had, uh, there are actually two best teachers I had at the HQ. One is Karel Millenaar and the other one is Dimme van der Hout. And Karel Millenaar uh, told me one thing. I sa he said, trust me, 80% of the people in any industry do not know anything what they're, do what they're doing. They have <laughs> okay. no idea. So for me, um, I'm not telling, saying this to agencies because I, I'm pretty sure they don't even look for that. But I look for the root causes of things, yeah. and, um, and that's my job as a UX designer, as okay. I see it. So I look for the root causes because strategically that puts me into the best position into creating a great solution. It doesn't mean I will, will create a great solution, yeah. but that's the best I can do. If, if you don't understand that internally, and internally people are not uh, aware of being a strategist and making these um, sound researched and well-defined decisions yeah. that benefit everybody in your company because you literally understand what they are doing, yeah. 
then I see if you can build a design system that works for, for everybody, yeah, so freedom for one, Okay. then you really understand UX really well. And there are some agencies who have a, a design system that their customers use as well. Yeah. So they're dependent on their customers using their design system and they use it themselves. That, yeah. that shows really a lot of competence and that's the thing I think you should look for when, okay. when because I saw um, the Gemeente Amsterdam uh -huh built a, uh, an agency built a design system for the gemeente Amsterdam <clears throat> and the first thing I, uh, I was in the um, municipality office a couple of weeks ago I knew they built that design system and I was looking at all the signs and they they didn't use that design system I knew that and I was uh, and instantly I was like you did not understand the full story of what this design system needs just like like I said you probably need your business cards and, and all the other stuff that surround your presentation to yeah. follow that yeah they just did the technical side yeah and they didn't build a design system yeah so it, it's it's a end-to-end -end mechanism you cannot shortcut it like I uh, <laughs> like you just uh, you have yeah. That, yeah if you don't apply that to the technical, business card yes. to uh, presentation and things like that you're doing it halfway yes that's yeah. basically and that's why i'm uh, saying designing the end is super important yeah. but the, the technical side is always end to end yeah but the strategic the strategical side is not okay so that's that's it, it's decided by people and depending on what they can see as a full story yeah. that's it cool yeah so um I have um, uh, two more questions Perfect. for you. Uh, uh, the first one, you probably answered that already, but I'm going to ask that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, is there one topic or one thing your industry, um, you strongly believe in, but your industry isn't? Mm, yeah. Um, poo. Th this is my... Um, I have a, I have one simple uh, thing about um, yeah it's more it, it has to do with governance it has to do with leadership and it also has to do with um, uh, putting your values first I think um, the doers are the decision makers the so, doers are the decision makers yes okay and the reason is this um, if you know that from the total uh, th um, physical and, and, um, and uh, realm of energy and spiritual realm, we can see 15%, but the remaining 85 is completely, yeah, we, we literally can't um, see that. We, we can't feel that it's, it's there, mm -hmm. but we can't see that. If you know that 70% of our judgment is based on what we see, then literally, if you look at something and you think you know what you're talking about, yeah, it's probably because you suck at it, because 70% of 15% is, is 10%, is hidden, yeah. 10 and a half, of a total of 100. So the moral of that is that I often see leadership telling people what to do and making decisions based on what they see, where the doers are really the decision makers because they literally make it yeah. all the way to the end. They yeah. do the remaining 90, 90%. I really don't see any reason for one person to take full control over that situation where it's basically a co-creation. So again, when, when I say freedom for one, the only true power that your design system has is the one that you give away to the people who use it. Use it, yeah. So the more power you take, the less w the less the people will, will use it and adopt it. The yeah. more strict it is, the less freedom they will have. Yeah. So everything has um, a, a pro and a con. So maybe my system is way too too small and too little, but it gives a lot of freedom and a lot of power to sim uh, to to small small companies, small groups, and even individuals. So what what is it that you want? Yeah. What is it that you want? Understand. That's what that, that trade off you need to make because there are so many decisions you can take. It's basically a choice. Yeah, I like the f uh, freedom, freedom for one, but at the same time, <coughs> let it go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make it perfectly imperfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a very good one. Um, the last one is um, um, yeah, it's it's all about uh, you, um, what's next for you. What is the what are the, the next thing? I, I'm it, this is a dream of mine because I want to yeah, literally slam dunk a few opinions about um, 
not just about people, but uh, how we should uh, onboard people. And I would love to build a uh, like a, a simple website, but literally with eight year olds using my design system, and then literally um, showing that anybody, literally anybody, can can build and use a design system if they were addressed and approached from a point of equality. So as above, as below. Yeah. If you cannot teach an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old how to use your design system, you probably don't understand it yourself. Mm -hmm. So these are, I know this from video games. I made a few games for kids and they're the toughest audience ever yeah. because okay. they don't give you feedback. They just throw away the, the iPad when they don't like it, right? <laughs> That's it. That's what they do. Okay. okay and okay. Um, if you create a design system for kids, yeah, you better make it really compelling because otherwise they're going to sit there and they're not going to do what you want. They're just not going to do. Your colleague will do what you want because yeah. it's their job. Kids, yeah, they, if they don't like it, yeah, they, don't, they won't do it. So my three core uh, principles for um, what I call revolver design system, because it's basically lock, load, and ship your, your next UI kit or design system using that gradual system, is basically to say um, from sanity, you can create empowerment and playfulness. So keeping things really small, really simple, but really technically correct, people can get really small concepts in their own time. So let's say you take three weeks to make a primary color because you're not an artist. Maybe you're colorblind or whatever. Yeah, that's fine by me because I give you that uh, authority and autonomy over that small piece of your design system because you're the doer. So you're the decision maker. Okay. Right? Um, not everybody will understand something um, as fast as somebody else. That's uh, yeah. Some some people take a lot longer. Some people are um, uh, are are a lot faster or a lot more eager. That's why I also wanted this gov uh, gamified governance for for two reasons. If people are slower or they take more time, they st they get the same reward. There's not some clock saying eh, you did it wrong. If people are a lot faster and a lot more eager, and they're yeah maybe they're overachievers. Yeah, that could be. I th I say if somebody's an overachiever. Don't don't put that person down because that's their personal um, yeah. ambition. Yeah. If you just make sure that that's contained so that that overachiever only applies that to themselves. And if you have a gamified system, yeah, that system will reward him or her or whoever. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're putting in the effort. Yeah, you're indeed. doing the work. Yeah. Therefore, you get the... Uh, yeah, give give power to the doers. They give uh, decision making yeah, power yeah, to the, the doers. The only true power that something has over you or anybody is the one that you give away. Yeah. So cool. So. Is there someone in the industry that inspire you um, at the highest level? Like Ooh, in that I wouldn't uh, highest level. Okay, like so someone that inspire you in the uh, for for me personally, and that's from uh, um, not just own personal experience, but also from educational experience. That's a, a, a woman. She's uh, very well known in the tech industry. She's uh, her name is Sarah Dresner. Sarah Dresner. Yes. Sarah, I'm coming. I'm gonna see you very soon. <laughs> I know Sarah. I mean, she, I, I, we we exchange a few messages here uh, and there, and, uh, and she, she's uh, she's brilliant. No, she's uh, not just brilliant. She's very authentic because I yeah. can tell from own experience. In 2016, Sarah, 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 <laughs> join the podcast, Sarah. I'm listen, listen to to me here. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. really, she's um, yeah. she. When I uh, approached her to do some SVG work for a company or startup I was building back then in 2016, Kidrop, she replied to me very um, uh, nicely and as, a, as a person. Yeah. As a teacher, she's always very calm. Um, and she, she literally, she follows up on everybody who sends her an authentic message. Yeah. And that's so rare. And because most guys I meet in the industry, yeah, I instantly get into some cock blocking fight, right? And uh, that's maybe not the right word to choose, but yeah, uh, men yeah. are men and I prefer to work with women. And that's probably also the reason why I'm teaching my girlfriend at the Lassian and also want to teach women first and then teach a group of men yeah. to actually show that there's a huge difference. Difference, yeah. Yeah, huge difference. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm more into the, uh, uh, not just the spiritual side of things, but yeah. literally in the... Uh, yeah, in the, in the mindset, yeah. like what do so, you see? So there is something we do, um, this uh, Affix podcast, mm. we create a chain of uh, guests. So you were my, you, you, I'm, I'm glad that you were here today. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sara is someone that inspire you. Yeah, And Sara, when you visit Amsterdam, 
we want to invite you here, so uh, please come. But would you want to host the podcast having Sarah as your guest? Ah, of course. Who, uh, who would say no to that? Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's my personal mission. Okay. Can I make that happen? Okay, great. Cool. That, that would be very so, nice. So, uh, Gus, uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, you too. And um, thanks for the good conversation. Yeah, hopefully, um, uh, it's uh, uh, it's gonna be help people out there to understand a little bit more about design system, mm -hmm. freedom for one, yeah. and what it means, and how they can apply that to their uh, daily life, their yeah. daily routine. Because, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, um, it's not about digital only it's, no it's it's it's, 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 it's it's literally if you create freedom for one you create collaboration yeah because people are confident they're competent and they're they're they're, they're yeah they're much more happier they don't they don't feel looked uh, looked down upon yeah it's very important okay and is the could you just quickly tell uh, the people listening where they can find you online <laughs> you can't find me online because the internet is digital. But uh, <laughs> um, I have a, I have a really cool semantic portfolio I'm building. Uh, so semantic means um, you say a word. So let's say you want to ask Guus yeah. a question. So if you remember my name, Guus, yeah. and you put a dot in the middle between the U's, so yeah. gu dot us. Yes. Yeah. So basically, if you want to ask me something, you go to ask Guus. Yes. Yeah. And if you want to get me, you go to get, get Guus. Guus. And uh, Van Guus, V-A-N in all Guus, yeah. that's my portfolio. Because Indeed. that's the por portfolio of Van Guus. Yeah. And I'm very ab all about uh, inclusion. Yeah. So I also registered uh, Fuck Guus. <laughs> in, in case you disagree with me or you really don't like something yeah, you, you said. Yeah, you can just say it. <laughs> you, can, you can say it offline. That is brilliant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it on your uh, uh, the, uh, his, uh, hugs. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay. Uh, that's uh, what I that, that, I take UX very seriously okay so because that's also my own user experience yeah the, or the Gus experience or whatever you want to call it but um, I, uh, I say um, it's a very simple principle eat your own shit so uh, if you're really good at making uh, a unique concept for uh, a customer or whatever yeah. yeah also apply it for yourself, yourself so you can show yeah. how much you like yourself and how much you love your work cool Okay, thanks. You too. Uh, uh, people, we're done. See you next time. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks you again. Thank, thank you again. Th thank you, Davey. See you next time. Yeah.